Welcome to another unit on social network analytics. And this time I'm going to talk about edge lists as edge lists as a possibility to store the network data. An edge list as compared to an adjacency matrix is just an overview on all the edges in our network. So in this context, what we, you're going to do to generate an edge list is simply list all possible edges, all possible relationships by source and sync. So basically origin and target and usually order them starting with the source first. That's it to generating edge lists. Well, this just tells you, okay, there is an edge. Usually what you also save in an edge list is the weight of this corresponding edge. So the minimum edge list for each edge has origin, target, and weight. Some of them, especially if they're unweighted, just have a weight of one. But still, that's usually the standard, the default information stored in an edge list. So you can also define this type of strength of the relationship via the weight, which you store in the edge list. And an edge list has some specific advantages. It's especially useful if you focus not on the general structure, but on the edges, on the relationships in particular. And well, due to the fact that you always save origin and target, you can easily trace movements through the network. So whatever is based on movements in the network, if you want to know how easy it is to get from node A to B, that can easily be achieved with edge lists. Especially, I would say, even easier than, for example, with an adjacency matrix. It also has the advantage that it can store multi-valued relationships. Might then become a bit more problematic if you want to get statistics for this, evaluate the network, but it still can store multi-valued relationships. Well, what do I mean with multi-valued relationships? Imagine you have a set of people who all know each other. Well, some people know themselves from school, some from university, some from work. But it could also be the case that some people know themselves from work and from school. So they actually would get two values. One value telling whoever takes a look at the network that they know themselves from school. Another value telling them that they know themselves from work. That's a bit problematic or more or less almost impossible with adjacency matrices, that's relatively easily done with an edge list. Simply add an additional edge with a different value. As I said, it's problematic to analyze this data, but it can easily represent such a multi-valued relationship or network. Also, another interesting point, whereas we argued with adjacency matrices that if we have a two-sided network, we can actually save on storage space. Here in this case, sidedness, multi-sidedness doesn't matter because we're only focusing on the edges and the edges don't care whether the nodes can be divided into two separate groups. So here it's simply on the edges. In other words, if you have a relatively sparse or sparsely populated network, a network with very low density, with very few entries in the adjacency matrix, then from a memory point of view, the edge list, list would actually be the preferred choice because you only have to save the edges and not all the entries for the network. And finally, one problem of the edge list is while it might help with movement-oriented statistics, as mentioned in the second point, it actually has a big problem with statistics-based 
on the matrix structure of the adjacency matrix, like everything related to eigenvalue centrality, will lead to problems if you try to do this with an edge list, because usually first step would be you need to first generate the adjacency matrix. Well, so much for the basic background on edge lists. Let's have a look at a few examples. So let's start with the first one, which we also have seen in the context of the adjacency matrix. That's here a simple directed network. We see here we have in total four different edges. So our edge list also contains only four entries. It's one, two, three, and four. For each entry, in the first column, we have the source node. So here we see one is leaving one, one is leaving two, two are leaving three. In the second column, we have the sink, so where it's going to. As I said, we could name them source and sink. We could also name them origin and target. And the third column names the strength or the weight of the edge. Here we see one to three, two to four. That's actually normally sized edges, so they have a weight of one. Three to two is a dotted line, so only one half. Three to four is the thick line, so it's the length of two. So that's the idea for storing network data. Well, it's relatively easy to recall. It's relatively few entries, just for four entries for this example. However, if I now use a slightly different example, that's the two-sided network from before. In this case, I see, well, it's still relatively limited. I only have six entries because I have six edges. I also see it doesn't matter that the network is two-sided. Well, it doesn't really care. It also doesn't care that there are additional nodes which are not really part of the network simply leaves them out. There's no seven anywhere with the sources or the sinks. So it only focuses on the important links. And what we can also see here, that's this network as a directed network. If I turn to example three, I have the same network, but as an undirected network. In this case, the edge list becomes larger. And that's one disadvantage because it needs almost double the saving space if I work with undirected networks as compared to directed network. So the edge list is actually more or less the opposite from what the adjacency matrix is. Adjacency matrix is easier to store with undirected networks. Edge list is easier to store with directed networks. Because here, with an undirected network, the link 1 and 5 means there is one edge going from 1 to 5. There's another one going from 5 to 1. That's if you really take this seriously. So this would double the amount of edges. And well, that's basically the first part on how to represent this, how to build the edge lists. So have a short look into Gephi, how Gephi is representing this. Then here in our data table, which is part of the data laboratory, we have the node list, which lists all the different nodes by their ID and their label. We also get the edge list. As I said here, it's the name source, which is used for the origin, and for the sync uses the term target. So it means from 1 to 3 there is an edge, from 2 to 4 is 1, 3 to 2, 3 to 4. They are numbered from 0 to 3. It's a directed network. That's actually the first example I've shown in the slides. And here we have the weights of this network. If I want to know how this looks like, I simply go to Overview and I see the network here. Well, it looks slightly different from the slides, but it's more or less the same if you just were to move this a little bit around. 
the important part in this context, all the data in Gephi is usually saved just as an edge list or a combination of node list and edge list. Well, this then concludes the short session on working with edge lists or generating edge lists. And well, I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.